All right, let's talk about the chemistry book. Okay, my chemistry notes are different than my biology. My biology is much simpler than my chemistry. Here are all of the resources for them. I have practice problems. I have the textbook reading guide with questions on it, completed notes, uh, my YouTube playlist. I have over a hundred videos on there of all of the, not necessarily lectures, but me discussing with the textbook, the concepts. I have reference sheets for them to use, the phenomena that they're gonna read and do, okay? Because it's not necessarily like biology where it's like all cohesively put together and kids just work through the book. These kids are gonna be working on assignments on scratch pieces of paper and they're gonna be turning them at a later time. So I'll explain as we go. Here is all of their laboratory equipment. So they have a reminder for all those things. And here's everything we're gonna talk about through the year. So term one, we're gonna cover all this material. Term two, term three, term four, and then that's the whole school year. So we're gonna mark these off as we go. Here is my safety code of conduct, everything that they need to be safe in the lab. And then we start. So how it works is notes are the first section. This is, ne they're never gonna like, I'm never gonna look at these. This is for them. So they're gonna do the vocab from the reading and then we're gonna just do it together. Like I'm gonna go through and explain accuracy and precision and we're gonna draw out our notes. We're gonna, it's just like very similar to the biology in the sense that the beginning is the same, but once we get into atomic structure, it starts to change. So they're in charge of the vocabulary. They're gonna have to find time in class to do it or at home. So I put a lot of pressure on them to do it more on their own rather than in the biology book, we're doing it together. So it's more independent. I would say it's scaffold, well, it's more difficult. And then we do notes and we talk about matter, molecules, states of matter, etc. We kind of work through all of these. We talk about the different models, we draw stuff out. It's all online. I have another resource page, just like my biology one, where they can access all of the resources. Okay. Now, this is the notes for the entire year. Now, if they go to college, they can come back here and go, oh, I can't remember solutions. And then they can come in here and see how, what a substrate is. And they can remember like, oh, I remember talking about that. I know the difference between these different intermolecular forces. All right, so this is more of a reference for the year. And then here, I got my last section. Now that I have a divider here. This is where I will grade their work. Okay, so coursework. Now I have the same rubrics in here. It's a little different than the biology, because I have what we call proofs and assignments. So they're a little different. And I still have the same achieving an A, earning a C, same grading scale, and then the same alignment. But then when we get into here, it's a little different because it's not just levels, it's also got assignments. Because practice problems, the labs that we're doing, they're on separate sheets of paper. So what they'll do is they'll turn in this book with the first three levels, and then they're also going to turn in these other assignments and I will give them a grade based on how much they got done for each of those based on my rubrics. All right, so if I go through here, all right, students have to create a science fair project for the year at the very beginning. And if they pick their own project, they get a four, but here's the main things they have to do, um, the uh, standards that they have to do, the I can statements. Like I can apply the scientific method and it steps to solve problems. And how they do that is they prove to me by creating their own science experiment. And all the proofs are like this. They're like a blank page and they have to draw out and prove to me that they understand the concepts. Like for example, I can determine how to properly measure using measurement rules. And they'll have to draw a picture of a ruler, a line, and they can show me that they understand measurement rules. So it's creative. They have to really think about it. And, and you think about it, by now, by the time they do this, they have already done a lab. They've already taken notes with me. We've already watched, probably watched some kind of video of some kind. So they're gonna come back and they're gonna put their thoughts on paper and give me their best shot. And they're also gonna, how I can apply significant figure rules to determine the number of digits that contribute toward accuracy. And they're gonna draw that as well. If they want a four, they can fit it on here or they can do it on a separate piece of paper. So the proofs are nice because it shows me what they're thinking and how they organize their work shows me how well they're putting their thoughts together. Because if it's all over the place, then I'll tell them like, hey, you're not very good at organizing your thoughts. Let's see if we can try better. Right, same here, another three things for them to work on. I can calculate the percentage error of a measurement compared to a standard. And they can, you know, show me the weight of a penny and they can show that what's the average weight of a penny, et cetera. Oh, actually that's my four assignment. My four assignment is to calculate the density of a penny and use the measurement to calculate your percent error. Research the standard density of a penny to make this calculation. So I'm making them go outside the class to figure out what's the average weight of a penny and how does it compare to your penny? So they're actually having to put in work 
outside of class to prove all of these concepts together. All right. So the idea behind four assignments is we're trying to tie it all together and go outside class and apply it. Now, this unit is pretty large. Okay, we have our four levels. These are our proofs. And these are where a lot of points come in. I really want to see their work. All of the rest of this stuff is important, but if they don't do it, it's not worth a lot of, to me. This is just practice, like reading questions, practice. I have them do reading. It's short. It's not a ton reading. They have practice problems they have to work on. We have phenomenon that we're going to do in class. So we're going to learn about the auroras. We're going to learn about fireworks. We're going to do labs. We're going to have five labs. If we don't have time, like some learning activities may not be completed due to limited time. So I could come in here and be like, we don't have time for beanbag isotopes. I'll just cross it out and we won't turn it in. But the idea is they'll turn all of this in and I'll look at it collectively and say, well, did they get a one, two, three, or four? Because all I care about is this is just practice. Where I'm really getting to the meat of things is up here. I want them to show me that, right? When they talk about emission spectra, I really hope they bring up the phenomena about the auroras or fireworks when they're talking about electrons moving up and down, okay? I hope that when they talk about electron configurations, they use the examples from the lab electron configurations. They're using the information they're learning to apply it to a proof that I am now grading. So these things, I'm giving them points for participation, basically. If they did it, they get basically four, a four out of it. I don't really care if they, I don't really care to look at it. I have keys for like all of this. So they can compare their answers to anything they want to. And I, I made all my own problems. I wrote all my own questions. So everything is just original and they just can find my key for it. But I care about is how well do they understand the particle nature of matter? And the, and the standards, the things that I really care about are, can they relate together matter, atoms, elements, and chemical symbols? In our notes, there is a little section where I talk about and relate all of them. They can literally draw the same picture that I drew from their notes. So the notes is a great guide for them for some of these things. They can recognize the states of matter for elements and compounds is related to the average kinetic energy of atoms. So they can simply find an example on the internet or come up with their own to describe that concept. And so they're gonna draw it out. The same thing here. So the idea is that the standards are they're having to prove to me that they understand it. And if they want a four, they have to go outside, right? So they research an element of your choice that is not in the first 20 elements and calculate its average atomic mass. Because in the to be proficient, you have to be able to calculate the average atomic mass of the first 20 elements. That's kind of my opinion, 20 elements. Anything above that, that's extra. So find an example. And if they do uranium, they're gonna find tons of isotopes and they're gonna go, oh, this is a lot more complicated than I thought. And that's the goal is to have them realize, oh, there's more than what Mr. Flynn's teaching, all right? And so that's how it all, it's all set up. So I don't have all of these things for them to work on in the book. These are just due on test day. So make sure you do your quizzes, make sure you do your um, common elements, these assignments, and just check them off as we go. And if we don't do candles, We'll cross it off because we don't have time for it because these are the pebbles that let you practice, but these are the boulders. These are the things that I really care about because they're really, they're really just answering the questions to the standards, right? These are the things that really matter. And so if they can draw this out, even if they, for example, if a student didn't do any of these assignments, but yet they did these, they could probably still pass my class. But is the quality of their work going to be very good unless they do this? They have to do this to do well. They just have to. And if they choose not to, that's on them. They will probably won't score very well. But I want to see that they understand the big pieces. And you'll notice how I have icons in all the corners. And it lines up with my page um, on my Canvas page and everything. So I can kind of see quickly, like, what chapter am I on? If I see a... Right, I see atoms being bonded together. Oh, it must be intermolecular forces. So I've got little icons to help them remember. Everything is out of four. And so they'll come in here and circle their grades once I've given them like a stamp right here out of one through four. And so these take some time to look at and you really get to work with the students and help them see what they're doing wrong. And you can catch mistakes as they go and make sure like, well, during that lab that we did, you may not have understand the parts of a solution. You're still mixing up solvent and sol solute and solvent in your drawing. You can see that and you can clarify it with them and talk about the lab and go back to it, right? Because they have things to reach back to. So we do several learning activities and then they tie it together right here. And I broke it into levels so that we can chunk it down and get through it all. Now, some of these are kind of hard because they're very math heavy, especially chemical quantities. All right. And we go through and work on each of them. And on the back here, I have the periodic table. It's laminated, so kids have a reference. And then here I have all of the 
uh, terms that you need to know. I made all of these on Adobe Illustrator. It took a very long time. I even corrected Flynn correctly. <laughs> Set an I in there. I have my common ions that they have to know. Acids, bases, Roman numerals. I even have a reference page on how to pronounce the formulas. This is just my thought pattern of how to name compounds. And so kids use these references all the time if they need help on a test. Um, these are allowed on the test, these reference sheets. I have the activity series for halogens and metals. And then lastly, solubility rules, all right? My goal here is that these back pages are just for them to kind of come back to if they need help. But just if kids ever get stuck, I've got YouTube videos they can watch. The notes are completed. The textbook reading guide, they have questions they can answer on a separate sheet of paper. The practice problems, I have a key. They can only access it at school, but they can't access it online, but they have all the problems at home. They have phenomena at home and all the reference sheets. So everything is listed out for them. They literally can find anything they want to if they looked hard enough. And then they can check off as we go through the whole year how it works. So the goal is to give kids ownership of their grades and it has the same tracking system as I in the other video I made that shows how kids move forward and how they compare to their peers in another video. But if you have any questions about this, please let me know. Or if there's something that you teach that's not in here that I think I should teach or maybe add, I'll be happy to listen to you and talk to you about it. So especially here, like if I'm talking about models and electrons, can I word this better? If you looked at it and said, oh, I don't know like how you worded that. Maybe that's a little too much. Help me out. I'd like some input. I've been doing this by myself, basically, and I've been slowly building it. So um, I'd like your input. Oh, also, too, down here, I also told the kids how to improve their grade. I try to get it everywhere so kids can see exactly what they need help with. Like proofs, show your revised proof to me. Quizzes, complete a correction. Complete corrections equals a four. Test corrections, you're a quarter point back. So they know exactly what they can get. And then they can get a final score for that unit, and I just put that grade in. Okay, it's simple. And also, one last thing I'll, I'll put on this. Let me pull this up. Ooh. Okay, it's right here. I made this a long time ago, and I have this in my class because kids need to know how to do a proof correctly. So I have emerging, approaching, proficient, exceeding. So emerging looks just like words. Approaching, they've got some of the material, but not all of it. Proficiency, they're showing me everything. And then a four is giving me that example of tying it all together. All right, so I actually have models that show students what a one, two, three, and four look like. I also have it for reading questions. Like if I look at their reading and they're giving me little one-liners that don't make much sense, I'm gonna get more on their case about making sure it's done correctly. So I've got these models that I give students um, in my class that they can reference. Even this model, how to do a correction these kind of things, um, that's some of the old stuff. There's my scale again from the other video on how I fix grades. Like if they got a 2.7, you know, if they did a correction, the most they can earn is a 3.02. That's what I bump it up to. They have to do the whole correction. And I even have a little rubric what the colors mean. So if you want an A, your test has to fall in the blue category. If you want an A minus, or yeah, if you want to get an A, oh, that's a little bit different. Oh, it's fine. Oh, let me look. Oh, that's telling me how to get an A. So if you're in the light blue section, you gotta do a little extra work. If you're in the blue section, your test is gonna probably help you get right up to a four. Okay, so you can kind of use that as a reference, but that's just how I quickly just give kids bumps in their grades. So it's just a nice scale for me, okay? If you have questions, I can send you this. Um, but that's how I'm doing it. I'm doing standards-based grading and it's working great because kids get instant feedback and they keep these books and I never collect them. And they just, I fix them, help them write in real time and uh, when kids turn stuff into me and then i grade it and i give it back to them the feedback is way too late you got to give it to them right in this right in real time say oh you got to fix this your atomic radius isn't that great let's talk about that example let's draw it out a little bit better and cleaner you have notes to look at in the front you've got videos you got a lab that we've done okay let's think about these things okay you can apply this to physics probably better the chemistry will probably fly with physics the biology it's just it's sophomore struggle. They really need a little more guidance. So it's a little more hand, it's a little more guided. This takes effort. You have to keep track of your reading. You have to keep track of your phenomena. You have to keep track of your labs. Right. And then they'll turn them all in on test day. And that's when I give them a grade. So, but I don't have due dates. Sorry, late work. It's just get it in on test day. And if it takes you a little longer, it takes you longer. But 
the penalty of falling behind is too great. So you better keep up. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I'll send you these files. They don't line up nicely on Canvas. Uh, not on Canvas, sorry. On a, Oh, and here's my reference sheets that my uh, learning resources, like for college, or sorry, for, uh, <clears throat> for biology. So I, if you have a phenomenon, a textbook, notes, learning videos, it's all here. So if they ever get lost, they just go to that section and they can find it. So I'll send you that link as well. And if there's something in there that you find a good, better video, let me know. I'll fix it and I'll maybe I'll change it. So I'm always open to new ideas. So thank you.